Thank you so much. And good evening, friends. How are we doing? Great. Excellent. Happy Tuesday. Happy graduation. Happy post meal itis. <laughs> You shout it out, but I can't hear a word you say. I'm talking loud, not saying much. I'm criticized, but all your bullets ricochet. You shoot me down. But I get out Bulletproof Nothing to lose Fire away Fire away Ricochet You take your eyes Fire away Fire away Shoot me down Everybody knows that song, right? We all like to put on the radio and listen to our favorite jams whenever we're feeling in a bad mood. But my friends, that's not your song, Ian. That's someone else's words, as much as we love Sia, singing songs that you didn't write, that you somehow adopt to your own life. And I get it, everybody in here has overcome some pretty epic stuff. But what if we gave them back their songs, their music, their words, their stories, and started writing our own? Good evening. <laughs> I'll put that back on the zone, don't worry. Uh, uh, one of that was for dramatic effect. Thank you. I found that earlier. Another <laughs> right on time. Um, so my name is Emma J. I am a singer songwriter originally from New Zealand, um, and have been living in the Washington area, DC, DC area for the past nine or so years. And um, my mother is originally from Erie, Pennsylvania. Um, my father was from Fiji. My mother's mother was from Iowa, is from Iowa by way of Norway. And my grandfather, my father's, my mother's father, uh, was from Iran. Uh, I tell people that I'm overcoming racism in my body. Um, it's a fun party trick, thank you. And <laughs> why am I bringing that up? Because as you've heard so many times already this evening, it's really easy for us to subscribe ourselves to one narrative, one story, one sort of song, if you will that we kind of repeat over and over and over again when it comes to who we are and how we show up for each other and the world. But more importantly, it's also how we tend to show up for ourselves. But as much as every single one of you in this room has overcome something pretty incredible, not just by graduating, but by being here in this specific room right now, I want to encourage you to recognize that this is not just one narrative in your life. This is not the one narrative in your life, sorry. This is just one page, one chapter, one song in your album. So I'm going to tell you a little bit about um, my story before we get too far into this, because um, unlike you guys, I mean, I, I've had my trauma, um, I've had my medical trauma, um, but it's a little bit different. So I was born with a relatively rare neurological condition, try saying that 10 times fast, um, called hydrocephalus. Now, for anybody who does not know what hydrocephalus is, does anybody, has anybody heard of hydrocephalus? No? Oh, one person? Oh, fantastic. Two people, three people. Don't be shy. Come on now. Okay. <laughs> so hydrocephalus is a, um, it's a neurological condition where, which literally translates to um, 
water on the brain, or as you Americans like to say, water on the brain. Uh, <laughs> Uh, I was diagnosed at four months when uh, they took a CT scan of my head because my head was growing, dis growing disproportionately faster than the rest of my body. Now, everybody's brains floats in water. You're aware of this? It is called cerebral spinal fluid, or CSF for short. However, for most people, everybody in this room in fact, uh, the, that cerebral spinal fluid goes into your head by about 400 to 600 milliliters a day and then drains down your spinal cord. But from me, I have a cyst the size of my fist, if everybody wants to hold up your fist. Imagine a pillow of water in the middle of your head that blocks off the exit way. So while water can get into my head, it has no way to get out. So at four months when they diagnosed me, I had a shunt or a really long tube inserted into my head to drain this, the water out and into my peritoneal cavity. By the time I was 12, I'd had 10 brain surgeries and 24 surgeries in total as a result of this condition. I ascribe that story, that narrative, that pain to my life as my be all and end all. That was just who I thought I was. I went through an entire high school or elementary, middle and, and high school career thinking I'm a freak, I'm a weirdo. I was treated as the loner. I was treated as, the, as somebody who didn't fit in. I was called every name under the sun. I missed out on school for weeks on end. But then I recognized that while it's so easy for us to fall victim to those stories that we tell ourselves and the songs that we sing to ourselves, on the flip side, it simply means that we have an opportunity because if you're familiar with, um, what is it, kintsugi? Does anybody here know what kintsugi is? It's a Japanese art where they, uh, they, they take broken anything, broken vases, broken ornaments, and they stick it back together with glue. Not with glue, with gold. Because gold makes us stronger. And that's what I feel like music does for us, is that it gives us an opportunity to take what we feel might be broken, our stories, our narratives, our experiences, and put it back together with something beautiful, something powerful, something even stronger. So after that, what I'd like to do is share with you three specific life lessons that I have turned into song from experiences that have the potential to leave me feeling even worse than I was, but that I've been able to turn into something positive that have taught me how to live my life more positively, powerfully, and I want to say compassionately. The first of this lesson is, again, back to the story of Kintsugi. You see, every single one of us has an opportunity to take the 13, 14, 18, 20, 82 years of experience we have at Almas Earth, and we have an opportunity to either lean into the darkness or lean into the positive. Has anybody here heard of the, uh, the story of two walks? Sir, excellent. Can you tell us about the tale of two walks? Sorry? Two eyes, they do have two eyes, yes. Two lives, tell me more about that. One lives in the light and one lives in the dark. Can we please give this back young man a round of applause? That is a fantastic summary. So the story of two wolves goes like this. A grandfather one night is talking to his grandson about the two wolves that live inside of each and every single one of us. One of, us is the wolf, one of those wolves is the wolf of darkness. What is darkness? It is everything negative. It is our depression. It is our fear. It is our bigotry. It is our hurt. It is our everything bad. The second wolf is the wolf of light the wolf of happiness, the wolf of positivity, the wolf of love. The caveat, however, is these two wolves are continuously fighting with each other, day in and day out. The grandson listening to his grandfather goes, well, shoot, if they're constantly fighting, what does that mean? Like, what, does any of them win? Yes, the grandfather says. Well, which one? Whichever wolf you decide to feed.
Why am I starting with this song? Great question. The reason is because each and every single one of you in this world has gone through a good day and gone through some pretty bad days. We know that. Thank you, Tucker. But and, and, at the end of the day, when it comes to how we choose to live our lives, it all depends on how you decide to focus. Do you want to choose the big good book? Do you want to focus on the negative? number one it's about making sure that you recognize that as you go about your life after today after tomorrow after the next day that you recognize that you have the power to decide every single day that you exist on how you want to live that day on purpose that's a pretty powerful opportunity that we each have the second lesson that i want to talk about is about the fact that every single one of us in this room is not privy to the narrative of other people. In fact, by show of hands, 
Who here has been typecasted as something that they are not in? What I mean by that is, who here has been told that because you're female or male, that you are to act or dress a certain way? Who here has been told that because of the color of your skin, you should be acting a certain type of way? Who here has been told that because we've been in a hospital, we should be acting a type of way? Who here has become, has been told, fill in the black, that we should act some type of way even though that's no longer of any hour? I think some of you guys are lying, you didn't put your hands up at all. <laughs> and if you aren't lying, I'm super jealous. But it's a really, really powerful thing to recognize is that it's very easy for us to lean into the judgments that we, that other people hold of us. Very often, we get told that we're too silly, too, too skinny, too tall, too white, too whatever it is, to be a certain type of authentic human being. Now, again, we've heard from some fantastic speakers already tonight, so I just want to emphasize that authenticity is everything. You do not need to play with the narrative of other, of other people. Yes, you guys are all, I say this word, I don't know. You guys are all badass enough. <laughs> um, please don't cancel me. But, <laughs> uh, you guys are all bad enough, but badass enough to, to, to thrive in an, in, an, um, in an environment that often is thought of as something that's hostile or, or negative. But that doesn't mean you need to plant the narrative of all of everybody else's judgments on that. Does that make sense? So that leads me to the next lesson that I've learned in my 35 years of existence, uh, battling with my own health problems, and that is the recognition that in life, we always have decisions. And one of the most powerful and beautiful ways that we can answer and make those decisions is to recognize two key words. Does anybody know what those two key words might be? Best. I am. Can okay, everybody say that with me? I am. Now this time I want you guys to say it with me and I want you to fill the blank. I am something or I am enough. I am worthy. I am whatever. Whatever comes to mind for you. On three. One, two, three. I am enough. Pause that. Because that is my second lesson. No matter where you go after today, I want you to recognize that you are whatever you decide to be. You are whoever you decide to be. And this is my answer to that call. to my true. 
Thank you so much. So I've talked about recognizing our power to choose the wolf of love over the wolf of negativity. We've talked about recognizing that we each have the opportunity to choose how we want to lead our lives by recognizing that you are whoever you want to be. The next thing I want to talk about, the last thing I want to talk about, is to reiterate your words, sir, around the power of community. Because as much as we may be superheroes in ourselves, every superhero, and I say that because I, it's my honest belief that adversity makes super, superheroes. I don't care who you are. If you have gone through some stuff, you have powers that most people do not have. But with every superhero, we need a community. Whether it's the Avengers, the X-Men, whoever it is, we need a community. And I want you guys to look around right now that you've got a pretty epic community here. The key to knowing how a community works, however, is to recognize that as much as we are surrounded by amazing people, you yourself are an amazing person because you yourself are part of that community. So I want to finish up with my last song, which is recognizing the power of who we connect with, the power of who we surround ourselves with, because it is my belief that a rising tide really does lift all boats. And as much as we may have our down days and Believe me, I know what it's like to have our down days. You're speaking to somebody who had to be held back a few years because of my brain damage. So I get it. But with the power of community, the power of perseverance, the power of compassion, the power of love, this is who I am today. This is who you are today. You guys have graduated, y'all. That's incredible. And that's because of who you are but also who you surround yourself with. So I want to say a big, and I send out a big aroha, which means love, um, and, and Māori, which is the indigenous language of New Zealand, to all of you. And a, and a huge, huge thank you for having me here to celebrate your epicness and your, you know, the, the grace in this room, the power in this room, and the love in this room, because this community that you have, this is you. And this is your opportunity to rise even further. Have you done enough? Do I make it up? And now I've read about this for so long. Am I good enough to carry on an empty page? My doubting breath. Though I know it's what I need to do Can I bear the soul and live my truth? I've been in line as a line Found the hero in this storm in my I feel it pain in my heart Pulsing through my veins The magic of fear Setting it to rise again Breaking the wall I feel it
neighbor, please. Look at your neighbor. Give them a high five. It. These are your people, and you are one of their people. This day is the first day of the rest of your lives, guys. Make sure that you recognize your power and that your position right here. Go on, move forth, and make responsible decisions, but make them good decisions. Make yourselves happy, because life is wonderful if you choose to be the good wolf. My name is Emma G. It's been an absolute honor and pleasure to be here. If you have any questions, by all means, let me know. Otherwise, we'll get on with the show. Peace. Thank you.